All right, class, let's take a look at Coulomb's Law. Now, the trickiest part of Coulomb's Law is thinking about this relationship, the relationship between the electrostatic force and the distance between the two charges. So we do know by looking at this relationship that the electrostatic force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Now, that inverse piece, that makes sense. It makes sense because of what's in the denominator and what's in the numerator. It makes sense that if you were to increase the distance, you would decrease the force. If you were to decrease the distance, you would increase the force because radius or distance is in the denominator and the electrostatic force is in the numerator. It's not under one or anything like that. It's not in any denominator. Uh, if we were to take a peek at two charges, if we were to increase the distance between these two, we would increase that r, the distance would get bigger, and the force would get smaller. If we were to bring these guys closer to each other, let's get them real close, we would see that the distance between them gets a lot smaller, that r gets tiny, and we would know that the force between these two objects would get really big. They have a really big electrostatic force. Um, in this case, it's a force of repulsion because this Q2 or whatever, that guy is positively charged. Q1 there, that guy is po uh, positively charged. They're going to repel each other, and it's going to be a pretty big electrostatic force because this distance is really small. Now, the best way to understand this square thing is to look at some data. It's not just an inverse relationship, it's inversely proportional to the square. Another way to say it, and I'll actually type it because this is kind of an important language piece, is you can say that force and distance have an inverse square relationship. So what is an inverse square relationship? Like what does that square actually do to the data? Let's make a data chart and let's do some, let's just pick numbers. I like picking numbers as a as a strategy. Let's say that the distance between the two charges is 1 meter. And let's say we measure a force of let's say 20 newtons. Uh let me pick a different one actually. Mm -hmm. Let me do 32. You may see why in a moment. And let's just start changing our independent variable. Our independent variable is the distance on the left side of this um, data chart. And let's double it. That's a good way to systematically change our independent variable. Let's just start doubling it. So doubling 1 gives you 2. Now the question is, what does that inverse square rule do to the force? So what am I going to multiply this 32 by? Well, the inverse of 2 is 1 half. But it's not just the inverse, it's the inverse square. So it's 1 half squared. And if you guys know your math, then you know that 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And 32 times 1 fourth is 8. So so that's what an inverse square rule shows us. Let's do it again. Let's say we double the distance. So now we're four meters away, people. These charges are really far away. We just doubled that distance. And we're going to quarter the force. We're going to quarter the force. Eight times one-fourth, eight quartered, is two. So we can see that as we double the distance, we quarter the force. That's the pattern there. 